Hello, welcome to Mama Sue's Kitchen. I'm going to start a recipe today that's going to take me really two more days to complete it. So I may have on a different blouse tomorrow, but I'm going to show you how I make my homemade yeast bread. It's not hard at all. It You just have to do it in steps. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is you need to take uh, a quart canning jar and you need to poke holes in the lid. And the way I poked holes in mine was with an ice pick. I just did three holes. Now we're making the starter for the yeast bread. And you take two cups of warm water and I got mine just out of the faucet. You don't want it boiled, but you do want it good and warm. And then to that, you're gonna add three fourths cup of white sugar. Y'all, this is absolutely delicious bread. I promise you, you're gonna love it. All right, so let me just add that. And then to that, you're gonna take instant potato flakes. Be careful because they make these flavored, like onion flavored or uh, cheesy flavored. You just want the plain potato flakes. And you're gonna put three tablespoons in here. Okay, one. The red. All right, I'm gonna step over here and get a uh, something to stir this. Just want to stir the sugar and the potato flakes in, and the last thing that you put is two and a fourth teaspoons of yeast if you buy it in bulk, um, and I do. But if you don't, it would just be one package. But you're gonna put two and a fourth teaspoon, okay? And I'll do my fourth first, cause it's the first one I come to. I've had somebody say, why do you keep your spoons all together? And the reason I do is I know where they are. I have uh, one, two, okay? I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm not gonna stir that because it'll start working and it'll start bubbling and everything. But the reason I do keep these on the ring is because they're all together and I might have a recipe that calls for an eighth of a teaspoon and I would dig and dig and not be able to find it. So it just makes it easier for me. But this is all you do at the beginning. This is your starter. And I'm going to put it on my cabinet over there at my countertop by the stove. You just wanna keep it in a warm place for at least eight hours. It's okay if you leave it longer, but I'm gonna leave it for eight hours at least. And then I'll come back and I will show you what we do next. See you later. Good morning. I'm back with you this morning to show you the next step in the yeast bread. If you remember, or you can go, uh, Look at the beginning of this video, and this was the starter that I mixed together yesterday. You have to let it sit at least eight hours, but you can sit, uh, let it stay longer because I always let mine stay overnight. Okay, you're gonna take six cups of bread flour. 
I'm gonna put the six cups in a, you want to put it in a big pan. One. Two. And six. This makes this recipe makes three loaves of um, yeast bread. Okay. To that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of salt, and I'm going to go ahead and get it out of my salt container because. It's almost empty and let me put it in there because I sure don't want to put too much. Okay, one tablespoon of salt. Okay, a half a cup of white granulated sugar, a half a cup of vegetable oil, and I just buy mine in the big container. So a half a cup of the vegetable oil, okay. One and a half cups of warm water. It's like we used for the starter yesterday. I just get mine out of the faucet. And the last thing that we're gonna do is one and a half cups of the um, starter. And I really wanted to stir it. I thought I had something here. I let me get, this is what I've gotten out. I just got a case knife because the uh, potato flakes and everything may be in the bottom. Okay. So one and a half cups of the starter. You know, this has the yeast and everything. Have about this much left. Now, if you're not going to make any more bread, let me put this in here. If you're not gonna make any more bread right now, I would pour that out. But on the recipe, it says, add to your starter if you're going to. And what you would do is just do it just like you did at the beginning, you know, with the same amount of ingredients. Now, I'm just taking a wooden spoon and I'm stirring all of this together. And uh, after I get it all mixed, I'm going to put a towel over it, or I put a, a cotton dish cloth and Eight hours again, you're gonna just let it rise for eight hours. I think I've got all the flour from the bottom. I just wanna make sure.
Now, eight hours, this is gonna have risen. And <clears throat> I will show you then. Let me get my towel. I had one of my sweet followers to send me two of these towels that they're cotton that she said that she makes her uh, pumpkin bread or, you know, jelly roll bread that you roll up in. And also dish towel and a pie shell crust. I mean, blessed my socks off. But I just cover it like this. Forget about it. I'm going to put it over on my countertop. And in eight hours, I'll be back. And I'll show you what's the next step. Well, welcome back to Mama Sue's Kitchen. I'm on here just to show you the next step of the homemade yeast bread. Now, it has been sitting for eight hours, and do you see how it has risen? I just kept this towel over it and left it on my counter. Now, what I do now, I'm gonna punch it, punch it, and see what happens is that goes down, and then I'm going to kind of divide it into um, thirds because it makes three loaves. And I'm just going to put one, I'll show you these loaves. Two of them are bigger and one of them small because I don't have uh, three pans that are exactly the same size. But all you do is you punch it down and you divide it. Pan's empty. Here are my two pans that are about the same size. And then this one is smaller, so I put a smaller amount in it. I'm going to put these, I'll put the, well, this one in front so you can see maybe. I don't know if you can or not. But I will put them on my countertop and cover them with this. In the morning when I get up, I'm going to, I'll show you again. I have on another shirt probably, but they will have risen again and then I'll cook them. And oh my, that's when the fun begins. But I'll be back after eight more hours at least for these to rise. It's nothing to it, it just takes time. I'll be back. Okay, I got up this morning and I'm going to show you what the bread looks like after it has risen all night. You see, it almost, well, it almost is. It, it comes over the top. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this because I'm still in my pajamas. But I'm going to put it in my oven on, th on a preheated oven of 325 degrees. And then when it comes out, I'll be back to show you the finished product. Hello, welcome back to Mama Sue's Kitchen. This is the end of my bread making. I have, I think I have three or four videos that are put together and I'm dressed differently in all of them because it's not hard to do, but it takes time because the starter took eight hours and then you mix the bread and it had to rise for six to eight hours and then you punch it down and you put it in your uh, baking loaf pans. Now I have two of these old Corningware loaf pans and Amazon does have them, but they're vintage and they're quite expensive, but I will post um, on my webpage under the uh, favorite products, I will post um, some good ones that 
will link you. You will need three bread pans for this. And let me tell you, I, I went ahead and I turned them over on um, my cooling rack. And you can tell that this one is the smallest. I told you I only had two of this size. And then my next bread pan was not the same size, so I made this one smaller. And let me tell you, I'm going to cut, I, <clears throat> excuse me, this one. Let you see. <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little butter on here. The butter is cold. I didn't have, uh, have it out in my thing to to uh, soften because I used it all. But anyway, I'm gonna tell you this bread is so good and it makes a wonderful, wonderful gift. I don't, these are still kind of warm, but if I put this loaf of bread in a plastic bread bag, put a ribbon, you could give this to someone and they would be elated because it's so good. It is that good, that good. All right, I'm going to uh, taste this for you. Y'all. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a secret. These make the best cheese toast or grilled cheese or garlic bread. I'll show you where I cut this so you'll see. But y'all, it's not hard to do. It just takes a while to make and each step is not, it doesn't take that long. So I hope that you find that you love this and uh, the recipe is in my cookbook, but of course I'll post it on my website also. Y'all, thank you so much for following me. Remember, you be salt and light. Let others see Jesus wherever you are. I love each of you, and I'll be back soon.